Today was a pretty difficult day for my mental health. It has really helped me to clean up my space, but I'm still not feeling 100%. I don't know, also my head hurt and stuff like that, so we're just taking it easy today. We are taking it easy, staying in. Today, I wanted to plan out my studies for March. That is really important to me because right now I feel like I'm just floating about in my studies, just absolutely floating about. I'm also so late again on my upload schedule. It's just been so difficult for me to balance the internship hours with studying for my board exam and YouTube. I feel like those are three different worlds. Some weeks it takes a lot of sp a lot of mental space and a lot of time in just one area and then another week another area and then finally get to youtube and it, it kind of never feels balanced for me where am i going with this i don't know tomorrow i'm going to study that's where i was going i need to make a plan for my studies this march but today everything's kind of blurry so i just need to take things easy sleep i'm always just like go 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 i haven't been feeling like i'm i'm having some time to reflect and to just calm down and i feel like i always like things are just piling up and so overwhelmed that's the word i'm just overwhelmed so i just need to uncomplicate things that's exact i'm trying to uncomplicate things so i can work better have a nice weekend do a plan, follow through, just have a nice, cozy, relaxing time. There's no need to complicate things. Both left. 
I'm back from internship and we went grocery shopping. just finished with the organization that you've seen me do. It's really nice to make some changes in my space 
and feel it like a little upgraded so i still have a few things that corner wait how do i point my finger wait <laughs> well i'm planning to put a nice box of my old notes which i i don't think i have to keep all of them um but i do want to keep some of them so just going through them and deciding they're pretty organized because i did organize them by subject by year but still it's a lot so i have like two big containers probably this weekend i'm gonna get rid of this mess right here um for now i'm finally gonna get through um the report the OBGYN report that's haunting my days and my life i was also on the substance uh abuse substance abuse lecture yesterday and i never finished it the lecturer was really great she was really like Please ignore all of the mess behind me, I'm just in a very lazy mood. I feel so bothered by everything. So I'm going to talk about books because that always makes me feel better. The first book that I started the year with is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. It was incredible, I think this is such a good story if you need. A nice heartwarming pick-me-up and tries to challenge the status quo what is expected of little girls the story itself is very heartwarming and it's her really coming into this community as an orphan as someone who doesn't have a family and really like this is the found family book if you like that trope and if you like middle grade you cannot go wrong with green gables now I'm reading The Awakening by Kate Chopin. This book is really surprising me. I thought that I would like it, but I didn't think that I would like it this much. This was published in 1899. And just to think about the menace, the havoc that this book must have caused, because it's talking about adultery, high infidelity, your picket fence is sharp as knives, I was dancing around, dancing around it. How do I even explain this book? So this book explores divorce, divorce of a woman who does not fit in in the concept of marriage that was destined for every single woman who was born in that era. You need to fit in this role and you need to let go of your ideals, of your passions. Edna, who is our protagonist, she has this awakening. She belongs to herself she has so many facets that maybe are more important to her there's not shame there's not guilt she just feels liberation in short mrs pontelier was not a mother woman the mother women seemed to prevail that summer at grand isle it was easy to know them fluttering about with extended protecting wings when any harm real or imaginary threatened their precious brood there were women who idolized their children worshipped their husbands and esteemed it a holy privilege to efface themselves as individuals and grow wings as ministering angels. She finds herself in a marriage that is not loving, that is toxic, that is controlling. Her marriage to Leon's was purely an accident in this respect resembling many other marriages which masquerade as the decrees of fate. So she finds herself being enamored with another man her guts to publish this she had all her life long been accustomed to harbor thoughts and emotions which never voiced themselves they belonged to her and were her own and she entertained the conviction that she had a right to them and that they concerned no one but herself i can't make it more clear it's only something which i am beginning to comprehend which is revealing itself to me i really liked her with robert you get this dichotomy between edna and her husband and edna with robert and it's just so sad. It sometimes entered Mr. Pontelier's mind to wonder if his wife were not growing a little unbalanced mentally. 
He could see plainly that she was not herself, that is, he could not see that she was becoming herself and daily casting aside that fictitious self which we assume like a garment with which to appear before the world. This book is just like a huge testament and appreciation for that and I'm really really enjoying it, I thought that I would share it if you want to read it. Divorce, Divorce. in the 19th century, what the hell? for it tonight so but it's 24 hours hello i'm back for my little rendezvous to coffee i need to put my phone on do not disturb do not disturb sir please do not disturb okay stop can I it's 5 p.m and i haven't studied anything it's just been a really relaxing day to restore rejuvenate it's the most beautiful spring day, day today. Yesterday I, st I stopped at the thyroid cancer lecture. So that's where we're gonna continue off and doing our 20 questions for the day. Tomorrow starts spring, if I'm not mistaken. 20th, 20th of March is when spring starts. It feels like a luxury to experience another spring. And now I just get to be home and study my little silly lectures. I have my books, I have Ollie. I just got on a very nice cozy afternoon. Life is good. Okay, Anki. I think flashcards is the most boring thing. I get sick of them. I'm really bad at keeping up with flashcards. But we're gonna have a board exam. This is serious talk. <laughs> this is not a silly little med school exam. This is a board exam. I have so many decks that I have flashcards on. Um, okay, we're just gonna create a deck and we're gonna name it Endocrinology. Okay, so far I have five slides that I wanted to make flashcards from. Okay, let's get some work done, shall we? I've been getting questions from viewers regarding balancing internship and studying and personal life. Understand what to do with your hours that you have free. Like for example, it's eight. So if I really wanted to, I could do some work in the next two hours. Do I want to? It is a really big struggle for me. I don't do it naturally. And I think you've seen a little bit of me struggling. Anyone who studies long hours after work or internship knows that um, your mental reserve is limited and you still want to have time for your 
family, your friends, hobbies, living life, and it's so difficult to not know where to begin with that. Like, are you doing the right thing by sacrificing study hours or are you doing the right thing by sacrificing time with your family or friends or skipping social events or not going to the gym? All these things are so important, but you really do have to make a choice because the day only has 24 hours. The, the way you make choices is all about priorities. And I think about this all the time. What are my priorities in the moment? Maybe this weekend I need to focus more on this presentation, so I'm going to focus more on that. On other weekends, maybe I can focus more on the board exam. On other weekends where I'm feeling more burned out or exhausted, I'll focus on me time. And I feel like that's why we sometimes feel guilty over this is because there's always a choice involved and things just get left behind inevitably. Uh, personally, I feel like I never want to cut certain parts of my life just because of a certain academic goal or, or something that I want to achieve that's not related to the matters of the heart, the matters of my happiness and my overall enjoyment in life, family, my friends, myself. And I think to myself, this is what, this is what life is about. This is what is worth living for, having an abundance of those moments once I feel most connected. And so I'm never going to let go of that and so all of this to say that there are things in my life that i'm not willing to let go of and there is this certain acceptance with that that's like i'm i'm deciding not to spend my life obsessing over my studies and that means that some things are not going to be perfect some things are not going to come out perfectly precise it's not going to be the kind of life that i want even to have and the kind of life that's not also necessary for us to lead this is a whole other discussion if you feel like um you're not worthy enough or you're not smart enough for a certain profession trust me trust me when i say that's not the case all of this to say i take great detours. Having this idea that we're going to be able to find a perfect balance where we get to study every single thing that has, you know, that's on our list, just really letting go of, of that notion of a perfect world where I get to study so much every day and I always check off everything on my list and I always stay 10 hours at the hospital and I don't get tired ever and um, every interaction that I have throughout the day is good and I also have a perfect gym life like all of these things that cannot happen you know life isn't perfect and what matters at the end of the day are your priorities where are you the happiest are you having those moments that make you feel most present and at peace at the same time, I don't want to discourage anyone from working hard. I don't want to discourage myself from working hard. Study hard for your goals, be focused. Um, but also don't forget that there's, you know, other things that also demand your attention. You know, sometimes life can feel soft and everything can work out. I've always thought that I had to struggle to feel good about myself or I have to really give my best and give it all and leave nothing behind. I'm slowly losing that perspective. I'm being more compassionate uh, towards myself because it's not something that I that is healthy. And we're all just making our way. We don't need to be perfect to have a solid, happy life. I can just be myself. <laughs> I can, we can just be ourselves. 